I hope for the sake of everybody, Ukrainians, Russians, and the whole of humanity, that this war stops immediately. Because if it doesn't, it's not only the Ukrainians and the Russians that will suffer terribly. Everybody will suffer terribly if this war continues. Explain why. Because of the shock waves destabilizing the whole world. Let, let's start with the bottom line. Budgets. We have been living in an amazing era of peace in the last few decades. And it wasn't some kind of hippie fantasy. You saw it in the bottom line. You saw it in the budgets. In Europe, in the European Union, the average defense budget of EU members was around 3% of government budget. And that's a historical miracle, almost. For most of history, the budget of, of kings and emperors and sultans, like 50%, 80% goes to war, goes to the army. In Europe, it's just 3%. In the whole world, the average is about 6%. What we saw already within a few days, Germany doubles its military budget in a day. And I'm not against it. Given what they are facing, it's, it's reasonable for the Germans, for the Poles, for the, all of Europe to double their budgets. And you see other countries around the world doing the same thing. But this is, you know, this is a, 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 a race to the bottom. When they double their budgets, other countries look and, and feel insecure and double their budgets. So they have to double them again and triple them. And the money that should go to healthcare, that should go to education, that should go to fight climate change, this money will now go to tanks to missiles, to fighting wars. So there is less health care for everybody. And there is maybe no solution to climate change because the money goes to tanks. And in this way, even if you live in Australia, even if you live in Brazil, you will feel the repercussions of this war in less health care, in a deteriorating ecological crisis, in many other things. Again, another very central uh, question is technology. We are on the verge, we're already in the middle, actually, of new technological arms races in fields like artificial intelligence. And we need global agreement about how to regulate AI and to prevent the worst scenarios. How can we get a global agreement on AI when you have a new Cold War, a new hot war? So in this field, to all hopes of stopping the AI arms race will go up in smoke if this war continues. So again, everybody around the world would feel the consequences in, in many ways. This is much, much bigger than just another regional conflict. new surveillance technologies that are now deployed just to deal with this coronavirus uh, outbreak, when it's over, some governments may say, yes, but there is a second wave of corona coming, so we have to be prepared. And there is Ebola, and there is also regular flu. Why not protect people against that too with this new surveillance system? So the tendency would be to prolong it uh, indefinitely. Also, it's the moment when surveillance goes really under the skin, governments are now not, not just interested in where we go and who we meet, but even in what's happening inside our bodies. It's often said that you should never allow a good crisis to go to waste, because a crisis is an opportunity to also do re good reforms that in normal times people will never agree to, but in a crisis you see we have no chance, so, 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 so let's do it. Surveillance, People could look back in a hundred years and identify the coronavirus epidemic as the moment when a new regime of surveillance took over. We are probably one of the last generations of Homo sapiens. Within a century or two, Earth will be dominated by entities 
that are more different from us than we are different from Neanderthals or from chimpanzees. Because in the coming generations, we will learn how to engineer bodies and brains and minds. Now, how exactly will the future masters of the planet look like? This will be decided by the people who own the data. Those who control the data control the future, not just of humanity, but the future of life itself. Because today, data is the most important asset in the world. And if too much of the data becomes concentrated in too few hands, humanity will split not into classes, it will split into different species. There is a lot of talk these days about hacking computers and email accounts and bank accounts and mobile phones, but actually we are gaining the ability to hack human beings. If you know enough biology and you have enough computing power and data, you can hack my body and my brain and my life and you can understand me better than I understand myself. You can know my personality type, my political views, my sexual preferences, my mental weaknesses, my deepest fears and hopes. You know more about me than I know about myself. And you can do that not just to me, but to everyone. A system that understands us better than we understand ourselves can predict our feelings and decisions, can manipulate our feelings and decisions, and can ultimately make decisions for us. Now, in the past, many tyrants and governments wanted to do it, but nobody understood biology well enough, and nobody had enough computing power and data to hack millions of people. Neither the Gestapo nor the KGB could do it. But soon, at least some corporations and governments will be able to systematically hack all the people. We humans should get used to the idea that we are no longer mysterious souls. We are now hackable animals. By hacking organisms, elites may gain the power to re-engineer the future of life itself. Because once you can hack something, you can usually also engineer it. In the coming decades, AI and biotechnology will give us godlike abilities to re-engineer life and even to create completely new life forms. After four billion years of organic life shaped by natural selection, we are about to enter a new era of inorganic life shaped by intelligent design. Our intelligent design is going to be the new driving force of the evolution of life. Not the intelligent design of some god above the clouds, but our intelligent design and the intelligent design of our clouds, the IBM cloud, the Google cloud, they will be the driving forces of evolution. And in the process, our own species, Homo sapiens, is likely to disappear, not because we will destroy ourselves, but because we will change and upgrade ourselves into something very different. So really, humankind is about to gain divine powers of creation. We are in the process of becoming gods. And the big question that faces us in the coming decades is what to do with our new godlike powers. Humans have invented God, and humans have invented heaven and hell, and humans have in invented free will. But there is no more truth to free will than there is to heaven and hell. And to prepare for this kind of world, which is coming sooner, I think, than many people realize, we need an antivirus for the brain, for the mind. Even today, you think about something like fake news, Fake news basically uses our own weaknesses against us. Um, if the hackers, if the bots, they discover by monitoring you 
that you already have a bias against a particular group of people. So they will show you fake news about that particular group because you have an irresistible urge to click on it. To, what, what, what did they do this time? And you will easily believe the fake news because you have this pre-existing bias. So I want an antivirus for the brain that serves me, not some corporation, that also gets to know me and knows that I have this bias against this group and warns me, watch out, you are being manipulated and maybe even be authorized to block these kinds of manipulations. In, in, in the late 20th century, a, a, a house for humanity based on cooperation, based on collaboration, based on the understanding that uh, our future depends on being able to cooperate. Otherwise, we will become extinct as a species. And we all live in this house, but in the last few years, we stopped we neglected it, we stopped repairing it. We, we allow it to deteriorate more and more. And, um, you know, eventually it, will, it is collapsing now. So I hope that people will realize before it's too late that we need not just to stop this terrible war, we need to rebuild the institutions, we need to repair the global house in which we all live together. If it falls down, we all die. One, one very important change that can come out of this war is that maybe this is the chance to end the cultural war in the West and to remind ourselves that there is no contradiction between liberalism and nationalism and that they both have the same enemy in the figure of Putin and in the ideology of Putinism. He's creating with his own hands, it's just him. He is turning them into enemies. This will be his legacy. He is planting seeds of hatred for generations. And this will be his legacy for the regional history. And you know, if you look even broader at, at the whole world, he's dragging the whole of humankind back to the jungle, back to an era of war that we thought we have already left behind us. You know, as a historian, I feel sometimes ashamed or responsible, I don't know what, about what history, the, the knowledge of history is doing to people. I, 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 in, in recent year, weeks, I've been you know, watching all these world leaders talking with Putin, and very often he gave them lectures on history. I think that Macron had a, a, a discussion with him for five hours, and afterwards said, most of the time he was lecturing me about history. And as a historian, I feel, I feel, I feel ashamed that this is what my profession uh, uh, is in, in, in some way is doing. I know it from my own country. We suffer, in Israel, we also we suffer from too much history. I think people should be liberated from the past, not constantly repeating it again and again. You know, everybody should, should kind of free themselves from the memories of the Second World War. It's true of the Russians. It's also true of the Germans. What we need from Germany now is to stand up and be a leader, to be at the forefront of the struggle for, uh, for freedom. And um, sometimes Germans are afraid that if they speak forcefully or, or, or pick up a gun, everybody will say, hey, you're Nazis again. No, we won't think that. Mm -hmm.